You're a butterscotch biscuit, and I appreciate you. You've got to be careful of the consensus portfolio. I am making this video episode for you because we're going to celebrate chain stink. Chain stink is pumping. Green to the moon. What's going on? Unfortunately, most people are not going to make it. Now, this is from a YouTube influencer, okay? And holding Bitcoin will be a huge mistake. Who said that? I said that, okay? You got to pretend that you are sitting in a room with a lot of emotional people. When you're looking at a chart, when you're looking at a coin, a community, assets, investing, speculation, that's what you're doing. You're sitting in a room. You want to know, all right, are these people emotional to the upside or emotional to the downside? That's what you're trying to do. Look at this poll. He asks, if you can only own one coin for this bull run, what would you choose? Before I answered this, I was like, there's no way it's Bitcoin. You're asking YouTube, DGENs, you know, we're all here to have fun. Make sure you like, subscribe, belly button, all friends. I appreciate every single one of you. Family friendly show. I'm like, there's no way he's going to pick Bitcoin. Well, everyone picked Bitcoin. Wow. Consensus portfolio. Absolutely disgusting for the people holding, but this is what we want to see. You know, I would be very scared if everybody was all in the altcoins and Bitcoin was like 3% allocation. Do you want to know something though? Let me tell you something, friends. When it came to Bitcoin, you can have a look at the alt the, the Bitcoin dominance and you could have predicted something like this would happen because I was in denial in a bit in a, with a, uh, a bit of the information here. Around March this year, people were all holding Ethereum. Ethereum did the merge. And then look, Bitcoin dominance just started going up. Everybody was stacked in altcoins. Now, granted, it's not as big as they all think, but it's interesting, isn't it? You get the direction right. You just don't know the size of the move. And of course, you're going to have to pump it, friends. There's no other way. You see that? We don't want any conflict. I'm here to tell you, you got to pay attention to the most picked coin and not be in it. But you also got to be careful of the polls because any of the polls can easily be flunked. It's just, it's something I've seen. It correlates out to everybody else. I'm like, oh, you all think Bitcoin's going to go on a massive super nuclear run to the sky. And then all the old coins are going to go hundreds of X's and they're going to not diminish gains like they have three times in a row. Of course, of course, of course. I like seeing this, but unfortunately, you got a problem here. You got a problem for everyone who's going to realize too late. So what are they going to do? Well, this is just my guess. My guess is, okay, if Bitcoin, 70% chance, stops at 80K, around 80 to 100K, if it stops there, I feel like everybody in them will be like, wait a minute, these returns suck. These people have made like 10x in altcoins. I'm only up like a 3x. What are they going to do? I reckon in that final burst, maybe around where the second arrow is, friends, or the first arrow, somewhere around here, they're going to then just destroy altcoins to the upside. They're going to just deploy their Bitcoin and just go, you know what? I've missed out so much. I'm just going to go FOMO. That's what I feel is going to happen because I realize diminishing gains is real. But was there a way to avoid this? Yes, there is, friends. I did something. I went against the grain. Now, this took a lot of balls. Let me tell you why it took a lot of balls. It's because in every single Bitcoin bear market, the altcoin dominance rise was so vicious, you can't own Bitcoin at all. Like, you, you lose 99%. 99. But I knew something was different in 2021 and 2022. All right. As 2022 appeared and we walked into 2022, I could smell something. I could smell that the average market participant is now smarter. It is more efficient. And I've made many videos, many videos, friends. I've made so many episodes. I've told you some secrets. One secret is in each crypto cycle, the alt season happens earlier and earlier and earlier. In 2013, you had an alt season at the very end. In 2017, it started around the Bitcoin halving just after it, and it continued. You had two waves. In 2020, we had DeFi season literally on the Bitcoin halving. 
You did not have alt season in 2017 until Bitcoin broke the all-time high. But in 2020, Bitcoin didn't need to break the all-time high. We had a big DeFi season in the middle of 2020, June, July, August, huge. Had nothing to do with Bitcoin breaking the all-time high. So I knew, I'm like, wait a minute, there's a chance by the time Bitcoin reaches its halvening, which is April 2024, that if I wait until Bitcoin halvening, if I am fully stacked in Bitcoin, I'm going to miss out on the best gains. So what did I do? I grabbed life by the balls and I said, well, I'm going to have to go into the unknown. I'm going to have to actually buy altcoins in a crypto bear market, which is the cardinal sin. Now, the volatility is sucks, man, because, you know, watching Ethereum, you're watching, you're watching Chainlink get crushed, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, Hex, yes, all get crushed and ravaged. But the volatility, I think it's going to make up for it. I did not know how early it would be. This is the game, range, you can never get it early. But as you can see, look at this, okay? You, you can actually see, right, the, the season comes at the very end of the cycle and then like six months before the end. And then this one is 12 months before the end, right? This might be 15 months before the end. What would that mean? That would actually mean between actually now and say Feb next year, alts have flushed up. Now, not huge, but enough that you're getting excited and juicy. Whereas in the past, you needed Bitcoin to make a clean break above its all-time high to get any interest in altcoins until 2020. So that's the type of information I was able to discover. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm noticing a pattern here. I wonder if I can front run the crowd. And I did, I did front run the crowd and it's still happening right now. Now, the best thing for you is that it's not done yet. The best thing for you is you have a friend like me named your friend, Sami, who actually, despite going offside, has actually told you, hey, friends, you know, I'm offside. You can actually buy a better price than me. And I don't charge for it. And it's actually cheating and it kills me inside to know that people are getting a better deal than me and I'm talking about it and I don't want to do that. I don't want to, uh, by default, people don't want to do this. They can, well, I did the hard work. I don't want you to buy but I swallowed my pride and I said, the people deserve the best. I respect the people. The people respect me. I'm giving you value. You will give me value in the future. You might tip me in Ethereum. A tip. You don't have to. Okay. I'm doing this for you. The good of your heart. So I've started to research everything. I was already bullish chaining from before, but it's great to see the candle start to appear. All right. We're seeing it as it turn, as it happens. So what I don't like is a lot of other people, what I'll do is they'll say nothing. They'll say two sides. Oh, we might go up. We might go down. And then when it goes on six months later, oh, I told you guys, this is going to happen. I don't like those people. I'm here to actually win. All right? I'm here to tell you as every day prints, as every weekly candle prints, there is an action we can take right here. I made so many videos like this might be the last stop, man. It just flipped green, just flipped green. We can go down, but it's running out of time. It's been 18 months. So many people are thankful to me. Now, of course, there's Pulse Chain, Pulse XX. There's other things that still have to play out, but that's okay. I love that this is playing out. Something's going right. That's why I brought you all this information, friends. I told you. If only you had a friend who told you to market buy link under 10 bucks for the past 18 months. Market buy. Don't leave bids. Don't try to get these $2 trash. Friends, there are influencers out there, all these trading influencers. Like, ah, oh, chain link, I'll make a case. I can make a case for chain link, catching seven cents, 70 cents. Wrong. They're cucks. You're not going to make it. Guess what? You know those influencers? They make it. Why? Because you believe they're BS. You sign up to their FTX and trading trash exchanges. They get the commission and they get to exit. You get nothing if you follow them. You understand? You are the product. If only you had a friend, right? It'd be nice if this friend of yours told you that Chainlink flipped bullish at eight bucks as well. So I made the thesis. I told you to chosen. Everything's being chosen. And then I also gave it to you. I told you, well, when it comes to the link chart, we've done it before. Isn't that crazy? We flipped green, some red candles, and then pop. Look, this exactly happened before, friends. Look at this. Look at this. Right here. I made this video. We flipped green, some red. Pop! Isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? I'm live in real time. I really hope this does repeat again. Look, this goes and breaks the all-time high, but it was much smaller back then. It was a different world.
If only that friend of yours too told you that the chain link token is not needed, but you should buy it. Why? It's because you are front running the future use case. I wish this friend also told you that Bitcoin and Ethereum went up the most when they had no proper use case. Do you understand? When did Bitcoin go up the most? At the start when it was considered a scam, it was meant to be P2P digital cash. It had nothing to do with store of value. Satoshi's white paper did not say Bitcoin, store of value. It said digital cash, P2P cash. It went up the freaking most. No ETF. John McAfee wasn't even eating his willy until here. And when he did, it was still room to go. Now we have Michael Saylor pretending like he's like some, the Bastion League, ah, cybernetic hornet's nest, come feast, feast on me. Elon Musk, he pumped and dumped it. Elon Musk used Bitcoin to pump Tesla because he wanted people to price in 10 years of future growth into Tesla, all right? I made a video on that too. If only you had a friend who told you, what about Ethereum, friends? You know, Ethereum, we're looking at Ethereum. Ethereum's best days were when it literally did nothing. It started doing ICOs up in 2017 here, all right? Look, Ethereum was already freaking up, like the first 20X off nothing. Look, it didn't even have DeFi here. DeFi comes here. It did the first 1,000, 2,000 X rally. No DeFi, no nothing. No Chainlink, no Uniswap, nothing. You don't buy when the use case is there. That means it's priced in. You need the risk, right? You need people to be uncertain. And that's what I've said. I've, I've did the research. I'm like, wow, you're all uncertain, Habibi. Aren't you? You are so uncertain. I told you, well, guess what? If we did the research and we found out that there is certainty, well, there's an edge here. And I did that. And instead of charging you like all these other trash subhuman filth, I told you for free. I love you, friends. I love you. Okay, look. Also, you know, if you had a friend out there, I don't know who I'm thinking about, but it would be nice if they told you to hold Chainlink until it flips XRP. It would be extra nice, wouldn't it? You know, if this friend maybe got gets asked 19 times a day, when do I sell? When do I sell? When do I sell? And I go, you know what? I think XRP is a pretty nice target. I think it's looking pretty juicy, right? I think XRP shouldn't be higher market cap than Linky Boo, all right? Chain stink. It would also be nice, right? This This friend, this imaginary friend, which may or may not exist, if only this friend told you, don't even look at the Link USD chart. Look at Link ETH chart. If only that friend also told you, like I told you one year ago, the bug eaters already chose Chain Stink. Chain Stink has been chosen. It's stinky Link for a reason. The bug eaters like it. It's nice and stinky. It's predetermined. All the white papers, all the articles, all the rumors, they're all true. Swift. Swift have chosen Chain Stink. Why? Why have they chosen? <laughs> why have they chosen Chainlink? It's because his Chainlink, Swift want to connect to one place that hosts every single blockchain and connects to them all. Because Swift over here doesn't have the manpower or the technology or the care to go and make developer applications for like thirty chains. They have no idea who's going to win. They have to learn every single chain and it's going to be wasting their time. Too many chains pop up. So they're all just going to connect to chain link. It bridges everything. This is the link ETH chart. Okay. This is the actual, the only chart I care about. I don't care about the USD charts. Now chain link chart is up. This is nice. 200% from the low almost. Where's it going to go? I don't know. I just think, I just think it should be up here or here or here. Now, what does this price mean? <clears throat> I like this. Type. See, this is 0 0.02. It means it's, means the chain link price is 2% of whatever Ethereum is. And up here, it's 3%. And up here, it's 4%, 5%, okay? So we are not even 1% yet, all right? I think you auto buy on the 1%. This is just me. This literally just me. Don't, don't go buy auto buy. That's just if I could see value, all right? And why is that? <clears throat> it's because it's, it's such a high probability for me. It's not like, oh, maybe 30% or like, I feel like this is like a 98% chance. You might say, oh, that means you could technically go all in. Oh, golly gee, maybe I've been speaking about something for like 18 months, right? 
even if you buy it up here, I know friends, 200% on your ETH from here, not the best, okay? Because there are other things out there, but what about up here? This is a 4X, I think we can get up there. 300%, 10 ETH into 40 ETH, hold that. There's so much opportunity here because it's it's just the blue chip, man. Like it's, it's on its way up. Now, of course, if you buy and it goes down, that's on you. I don't really care. You know, I tell you, friends, you ain't going to give anybody else your profits. So spare them with the cries about it going down. You know, that friend, though, wouldn't it be nice if that friend threw in like something spicy and that told you? Imagine this friend told you that Vitalik, who created Ethereum, imagine you knew that Vitalik actually hates Chainlink and that if Chainlink made it to top three crypto, it would be one of the most emphatic and euphoric and obvious victories ever. And everybody would be embarrassed. Every single freaking... It would be so funny because your friend, Sami, right here, who may or may not know this friend, would literally go on a killing spree. I will literally call out every freaking influencer and call them frauds and subhuman filth and trash because instead of telling you to buy in the bear market and being bullish on crypto, they sold and they quit. They disappeared. They wait for the green candles to show you trash. They put leverage trading in front of your face. They do ICO pump and dumps. They send you to trash like polka dot and other dying stuff. They're too scared to move off the fence. They're too scared to say they like this or that because they want as much views. They're scum. These people are scum. You can't trust them. Okay. And if Chainlink actually makes it to top three, they're all going to be embarrassed because I'm literally going to call them out every single one and tell them, you cost your audience the only one good thing you could have done in your whole freaking career for the public sphere. The most obvious run of all time, chosen by the bug eaters with all the best fundamentals, solving the Oracle problem, all of these things built in crypto. In fact, all, half your videos, whenever you talk about it, would be like, oh yeah, it might do something. And yet you still drop the ball. You let everyone down, but guess what? These influencers are scammed. They didn't let themselves down. Why? Because they profited anyway. They dumped in the bull market and they ran. They got the ICO pump and dumps, so they don't really care. But luckily for you, you can share with your friends and family because actually you're getting better here, not worse. You know this friend, though? It would be really nice if this friend gave you a banana emoji out of respect and courage. You're welcome.